Welcome to OutDrive, folks. I'm your host, Cliff Callis, and each week I'm bringing you actionable marketing insights you can apply to reach, connect with, and convert rural American consumers. OutDrive is powered by Callis, a full-service advertising agency with a focus on marketing rural America. Callis offers a wide range of integrated marketing services, including website development, search engine marketing, social media, video, and digital. We develop strategic and creative campaigns to build your brand and your business. And you can learn more about us at ecalis.com. Now join me in the front seat as we head out on the road to success. Let's go. Hey folks, welcome to OutDrive. We've got another great story to share with you today about life and work in rural America. You know, it's summertime, which means our advertising agency is in high gear working on marketing and advertising for the Missouri State Fair. Our goal for the fair each year is to bring back all the folks who've been to the fair before and attract new ones, because our research shows that once someone attends the fair, they do come back. But our involvement with the fair goes beyond marketing the 11 days in August. We also help support the work of the Missouri State Fair Foundation which serves to help make the fair the very best it can be. The person who leads the foundation as its executive director is our guest today. Carrie Wilson grew up on a farm just a few minutes west of the state fairgrounds in Pettis County. You might say the fair is in her blood, as she watched her father help get the foundation started and growing, even taking her vacation from other jobs to help him as a volunteer. Carrie's passion is horses, and along with her managerial and educational experience in social services and her farm background, she is uniquely qualified to work with foundation members and volunteers to help take the fair to the next level. There's a lot of exciting things happening on the fairgrounds today, and even more to come in the years ahead, and we're excited to hear about it today. Welcome to Drive, Carrie. Thank you. It's really fun to be here. I'm glad that you're here, and uh, I think we'll have some fun. You know, there's a lot I think we have to talk about. I definitely want to get into the State Fair Foundation and everything that you guys are doing, and I know you've got some really cool programs that celebrate agriculture in Missouri, and we can talk about those. I always like to talk about the rural America lifestyle, so I want to get your take on that, and then, you know, what you love about the fair. But before we get into any of those topics, tell us just a little bit about yourself. I grew up right here in Sedalia. I'm a local, born and raised on a farm just a few miles west of the fairgrounds. And I went to school in Greenridge, which is a little rural school, kindergarten through 12th grade. I always kind of had a little bit of a wanderlust, I guess, for the city. And I thought I would move away and live somewhere else and be a part of a big city. But I went to college over in Columbia at Mizzou. And I ended up getting my master's degree in social work and my PhD in social work. Somehow, I ended up back in Sedalia with my first job, right back on the farm, almost where I grew up. I'm living in my grandparents' home, so just right close to where I grew up. And I worked for Missouri Vocational Rehabilitation, which is a state agency. And I started as a counselor, but I ended up moving into mostly leadership roles. And I had a statewide role for a good portion of the time, really administering and program development and administration and managing the staff of 23 district offices around the state. So I did a lot of traveling. I got to meet a lot of people. It was a really great career, a really good experience. And then this opportunity came up at the foundation and I decided to kind of come home, come back to my roots, and I ended up with this position now as the executive director here at the Missouri State Fair Foundation. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, my work history. But I also, in my spare time, my passion has always been riding horses. My grandpa had horses and and had a horse for me, and, and I learned a lot riding with him. And I had a passion for showing, so I ended up showing quarter horses pretty much from my whole life, really. That's the main hobby that I've had, just about the only hobby that I have. And still to this day, I am now involved in the National Reining Horse Association. So if I have any spare time, that I'm usually doing something with horses. Oh, that's awesome. So you are Dr. Wilson. I apologize for not introducing you that way. 
Well, that is quite all right. I rarely use that title. It was more of a, a personal goal and accomplishment and, and some, you know, career development for myself. But I, I go by Carrie. So. Well, I think it's uh, very impressive. So congratulations on going through that. And I think you have a really good background for what you're doing. I think you're very well prepared from a management point of view and a leadership point of view. And, and certainly the ag component for the fair, which, you know, the fair is all about agriculture. Tell us a little bit about growing up on the farm and, you know, for those people who don't get the opportunity to do that, because it is a great experience, tell us what kind of life lessons you had coming away from the farm. Well, it certainly is a good experience. And as a kid, you know, I don't know that we ever appreciate what we have or how we're being raised, but I can look back now and understand how important that was to my own development. And certainly there were a lot of lessons to be learned. I guess one of the early lessons I learned is that life revolves around the weather. The weather was cooperating, things were good, and if it wasn't, everybody was worried. But in all seriousness, I also learned, I think, the value of just hard work. I watched my mom and dad work from sun up till sundown, seven days a week, and my grandparents were farmers as well, so everybody knew that work came first, especially when dealing with livestock. The chores were done before anything else, and I know now that that really did instill a work ethic in me that has helped, I think, with with my own professional life. And then I also learned, I think, just the value of being involved in the community and involved in organizations that sort of support your lifestyle and your career. And my mom and dad and grandparents were really active in Farm Bureau at a local and, and really a state and kind of a national level. And, and my dad was involved in a lot of farming organizations and We just had the opportunity to really be a participant in the community. So I think that also has kind of helped me end up where I am, just being supportive of the community and being involved. Well, that's a great upbringing. And uh, certainly I know your folks and have been, you know, leaders in our, really in our region, from my perspective, for a long, long time. And we appreciate everything that they've done and now what you're doing. And I do want to talk about horses just a second, because I have a granddaughter who's just getting into it. She's talking about, you know, the work that they have her do, cleaning stalls and as a part of getting the opportunity to ride, right? So, If she's listening, which I doubt that she is, but if she were, what would you tell her about her interest and passion in horses? Oh, I would say it is certainly a passion and it's a lifestyle. And she's exactly right. There's a lot of work that comes along with it. The privilege of riding involves a whole lot of work. And I have watched so many kids and I've had the opportunity to help some learn to ride. And it's just amazing what they learn through that process is very impactful in a young person's life. And it can lead to so many opportunities. There are scholarships available now for kids who ride. We have met so many people from all across the country and even around the world. We have friends in other countries now who we ride and show with. And so just the opportunities that come as part of the sport, it's just a lot of fun. A lot of hard work, a lot of fun. Well, I hope she stays with it. I'm excited to see her pursuing this dream. You know, I know your family farm is just a few miles west of the fairgrounds. When did you first get to experience the Missouri State Fair for yourself? You know, I don't really remember a time that I was not experiencing the Missouri State Fair. I know I went to a tractor pull when I was about one week old. So that was probably <laughs> uh, my first experience. I don't know if we were here in the State Fair or somewhere else, but So I I just remember as a very young kid going with my parents, but then when I was just a little bit older, we were allowed to go. My mom would drop us off at the gate and we could kind of run around the fair as long as we checked in with my grandma who worked at the 4-H building. I just honestly don't remember a time without the Missouri State Fair and living right here almost next door to it. We also spent a lot of time there in the off season. So there's a lot of events and meetings, especially the farm related organizations tend to hold meetings out there. So I just grew up spending a lot of time at the fairgrounds and of course, showing horses there too. So. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned sort of the off season events, because I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize is that fairgrounds is busy year round. It's not just the 11 days of the state fair and there's a lot going on. There certainly is. Yes. 
So I always like when we talk about the fair to ask somebody, what do you love about the fair? You know, I don't think I love just one thing. I think going back to as a kid, it was the excitement of it and the fact that so many people were there. I think it was just the general overall excitement of it that kind of drew me to it. And then as I became older, I started to understand the traditions that go on there, the families that come year after year and the livestock exhibits, the vendors, just the whole scope of it, I think kind of caught my interest. And now in this role, I'm really enjoying kind of the behind the scenes look about what it takes to put this fair on and all of the hard work that goes into that. And the staff out there are just amazing. And the part that each one of them plays in making the whole thing work is just, it's really fascinating to me. So I just, I love all of it. Again, I think you make a great point about all the stuff that's happening in the background that, again, people don't realize. They take it for granted that it's just, it just happens. But I think one of the neatest times during the year is those few days right before the fair when it just sort of transposes into what everybody sees during those 11 days. Right. It really is. It's so different to be out there in the off season. And you're exactly right. Within a few days time, all of a sudden, it just sort of magically appears and and we have state fair. So it's pretty fascinating. Yeah, it is. You know, I grew up parking cars for extra money every year at the fair for years. And the thing that, you know, I always would tell people, they'd say, well, why are you doing this? And I'm like, well, the money's, you know, I like having the extra pocket change, but everybody's coming to have fun. You know, it's just everybody's in a good mood. And they get there, they may be tired and hot and sweaty when they come back to their cars. But, you know, when they arrive, they're looking forward to it. The kids are excited. It's a good environment. It really is. Yeah, we're lucky. We're blessed to have that here in our community. Yes, we are. It's quite an asset. Well, when did you first discover the Fair Foundation? Yeah. So my dad was one of the very early board members of the foundation. And at the time that he was doing that, I was busy with my own career and working, but still, of course, attending the fair. And I noticed my dad having a lot of fun with that. And he would talk about it and it kind of caught my interest. Then shortly after he became involved, they started this dollar water sales project, which a lot of people are familiar with now, but he was in on the crew that started that. And one of my coworkers' sons actually had a job. They hired people in the beginning for that project. And they had two boys with metal chairs and little coolers and an umbrella, and they sold water for a dollar. And of course, now it's grown into this really big project and a really good fundraiser for us. But my dad has stayed involved with that since the very beginning. So I had the opportunity to spend some time with him out at the fair working on the water project for the foundation. And eventually I ended up taking my vacation time during the fair and spending all day, every day working alongside my dad and a a crew of other folks making that water project happen. So then I really got to see firsthand kind of what was going on with the foundation. And I was able to learn quite a little bit about the operation itself and get to know the people and really understand what the foundation was. So it kind of was a slow process leading up to where I am today. But over a number of years, I was able to be involved. You know, you mentioned uh, people taking their vacation to work at the fair. There's a lot of people that do that, I noticed over the years. Yeah, people come back. It just kind of gets in your blood and people just come back year after year because I think if you love it, you really love it and you want to be there and you want to be a part of it. I agree. So. Let's take just a few minutes and and just talk about the Fair Foundation and the programs that you have and everything you're involved in and, you know, maybe a couple of things that might surprise people about it. There's a lot. We could talk all day about the foundation, but I'll try to kind of give an overview. I think something that people might be surprised about it is just how diverse it is. So, of course, our primary objective is to raise funds to support the Missouri State Fair. But we do that in so many diverse ways. We really have something for everybody. We work toward the preservation of the historical buildings there on the fairgrounds. So if you're interested in history and preservation, we have something for you there. We have volunteers that come in from all over the state to help us out during the fair. It's just a very, very diverse organization. Let's talk a little bit about some of the specific programs that you have. I think pretty much all of them 
probably revolve around agriculture in some way. But let's talk just a bit about some of the programs that you have going on. Yeah, they do. For the most part, what we do revolves around agriculture, because like we said earlier in the conversation, the Missouri State Fair is all about agriculture. We have a pretty wide variety of programs, and I guess I would probably categorize them in two different ways. And the first would be our programs for youth. So one component of what the foundation does is education. And we try to educate the public in general about agriculture and about the Missouri State Fair, but we also want to contribute to and pour back into our youth. I'm kind of excited this year, we've started a brand new youth membership. So for young people age 18 through 24 can join our foundation for a really reduced cost and be a part of our organization. We also have a brand new young ambassador program. So for the very first time, we're going to be selecting a student from State Fair Community College. We're kind of teaming up with their ag department over there and offered an opportunity for students to apply with us. And we will select one student to receive a scholarship. And they will also be our young ambassador for the year for the fair. And then also throughout the next year, kind of working side by side with me. And it'll give that student an opportunity to serve the foundation, but also to learn about what we do and to also kind of expose them to some of those agricultural groups and activities. So kind of excited about that. And then we also have our first time exhibitors program, which is for kids who've never had the opportunity to show livestock at the Missouri State Fair before. And we give them a stipend or a grant to help kind of offset the cost for their family so that they can come and enjoy their first experience. And we also help them with some support and mentorship. Some of our board members will team up with those kids and just kind of cheer them on during the fair as they show their livestock there for the first time. So, and we also have a read to win program, which is for anybody pre-K through 12th grade and students who read a certain age appropriate number of books about the fair or about agriculture can receive a package from us that includes admission tickets for the fair. And so that's a really neat and well-received program. It's very popular. And what I think is great about it is some of those kids, it may be their first exposure to agriculture or to a fair. It may be their first time to be able to come to the fair because we're able to help offset the cost of their admission for themselves and their parent. So that's some of the youth programs that we have. And then we also have our, of course, our fundraising programs. That maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later, but we are always of course, trying to raise funds. That's that's our role and our purpose is to support the Missouri State Fair. But we also have a couple of fairly new exciting programs. And one is our 1901 Society Donor Recognition Program. So those donors that deserve recognition from us, we have started a program where they will receive a an award in a special ceremony each year for our donors. And then we also have a really, really great new program called the Missouri Agricultural Hall of Fame. And we just were able to kind of roll that out in the spring of this year. It's brand new. One of our board members discovered that Missouri did not have a statewide agricultural hall of fame. And so we knew that that would be the perfect fit for us at the foundation and as a connector to the Missouri State Fair. So we were able to develop a program in conjunction really with some guidance and support from the Missouri Department of Ag and also even from our governor and first lady. We were able to put together a really nice Missouri Ag Hall of Fame that we're still developing. It's still growing. We're still working on it. But we had our first inaugural ceremony back in April and our five Missouri Ag Hall of Fame recipients were recognized and and awarded in a ceremony in Jeff City. So I'm really excited to see where that goes and and already looking forward to next year when we will be doing that again. So, Well, I heard that was quite an event and I'm sure it will continue to grow over the years and we weren't able to go this year, but I'm excited to be there as well. I love some of these new youth programs you've got going on. I've got a you know, young daughter or youngest is going to be excited about that youth membership when she gets to be 18. You've talked about a lot of different things. If somebody is interested in learning more about these programs, tell them how to do that. You know, the best way is really just to come out and see us at the foundation or give us a call or go on our website. We are 
more than happy to visit with anybody about any and all of our programs. And we welcome everybody. Like I said earlier, it's such a diverse organization and such a diverse group of people. We have folks from all over the state, all different walks of life, from all different types of businesses. So if you're looking to get involved or want to know specifically about any of these programs, our website includes the majority of the information, the basics, but you can always just pick up the phone and give us a call and we will be happy to visit. Well, and your invitation to come out and and visit in person in the historic administration building right on the main drag, that's a cool invitation for anybody. So probably going to have some people popping in your door these days. Well, I hope so. And it's that time of year when people are popping in anyway, but I particularly enjoy it when people just just stop in and say hello and kind of see what we're doing. And I love to be able to answer people's questions. And one of the things that is my personal goal, I guess, that I believe in is that we're here to help everybody have a great experience at the Missouri State Fair. So if there's anything we can do, we're ready to try. We'll do our best to make it happen. So summertime is a busy time on the fairground. Uh, What kind of things are you spending your time on right now? It certainly is busy. We are in full on fair preparation, of course. As far as at the foundation, we just we have a lot of things to prepare for. We have a banquet the night before the fair. So we're we're busy kind of getting that all set up and ready to go. We have a lot of projects that we do during the fair. So we're we're gearing up to sell souvenirs and getting getting our supplies ordered, getting ready to have all of our volunteers come in. So there's just a lot of preparation. I think one of the key things that we're also doing is just kind of working shoulder to shoulder with the Missouri State Fair staff, because those folks have a lot of work to do too. And our projects intersect, of course, in a lot of places. So we're we're working with them, just making sure that we're all on the same page and that we're accomplishing what needs to be accomplished. And there's so much help to me. And, and I hope that in some ways I'm able to help them and just get everybody ready to go because it's coming. So it is coming and it is a great team it really is very impressive. Everything that everyone is able to get done with, you know, really limited resources. Of course, the fair is a big deal, but the fairgrounds is a large piece of property. There are lots of buildings. There's lots of uh, projects going on right now. I know Jason was telling me about some of the things underway right now. If somebody's listening and they're thinking, I'd like to get involved in this. What are some of the opportunities that people have to support the work that you do? You know, once again, just just stopping by for a visit and and giving us a call and, and finding out what we have in common. But two main ways that I would recommend is membership. So as a fundraising organization, we have memberships, everything from that junior membership that I mentioned to a family membership all the way up through the steward level which are different dollar amounts, and that's for an annual membership. But once you become a member, we try to give back. We offer a package of benefits to all of our members that include admission tickets to the fair, parking passes, and then all the way up through some of our members at those upper levels receive complimentary tickets to some VIP events during the fair. They have access to priority concert ticket sales and just a lot of neat things that you can receive as a member. Our members also have full voting privileges in the organization, and they receive communications from us about events and and what's coming up. And and we always try to keep our members informed of what's going on so that they can participate and so that they can be involved where they want to be. And then in addition to our memberships, we also have volunteers. We have the best volunteer force, I think, in the state of Missouri. And we have a lot of them. We have about 60 volunteers a day during the fair. And so working three different shifts during the day, our volunteers also come from all over the state and all walks of life. And if you just want to get involved and find out about what we do, coming out as a volunteer is a great opportunity. We pay for the admission ticket for our volunteers to get into the fair so they can come and work a three or four hour shift and then enjoy the rest of the the day there at the fair. So it's a great opportunity also to be involved. And a lot of our members are volunteers too. So yeah, because you have like several hundred volunteers each year, right? We do. Yeah, we we absolutely do. And we need every one of them and we appreciate every single one of them. So it is really what makes us 
tick during the fair, and we absolutely could not do it without our volunteers. So you have lots of things going on. You're touching a lot of different people. Are there certain types of people or groups that you target with your marketing? You know, we really, again, we're such a diverse organization that we're reaching out just to everybody. The, the state fair is a, a statewide event. And so we want to reach everybody, whether they're in rural America or in the urban areas. But of course, we do target the agricultural groups and the agribusinesses. Probably we want to make sure that they get our message. But we really just we reach out to anybody who's who's interested in the Missouri State Fair. I'm glad you mentioned statewide because one of the things that I have recognized over the few years of being involved is how the foundation has grown from sort of a central Missouri organization to truly statewide with urban partners and people from all over the state being involved. And I think that's one of the reasons that the foundation has done so well and grown so large over the years is because there are so many more people involved. Yeah, you're right. We we are governed by a board of directors. And so we have board members from all over the state and they bring so much value to the organization. There's so much diversity in thought and so many different professions involved. They bring their expertise. They bring their their knowledge, their skills, their passion, all of it to the fairgrounds. And they they literally come from all over the state to to be on our board. So really one of our goals, I think, as an organization, just moving forward, is to reach out and touch some of those areas in the state that maybe haven't participated as much in the fair. Some of those, again, those urban areas or far reaching corners of the state. We want to make sure that everybody's involved. Are there certain specific things that you're doing to kind of tell that story and get your message out? You know, I don't know if there are specific things other than we're just always open to suggestions. We're always trying to be visible at community events and be aware of what's going on in the larger state around us. We are partnering a little bit with some folks, again, in our urban areas. We're going to be getting to know the Duran Cherry Foundation right now because he, that's a, an organization out of Kansas City and they have a real interest in supporting the fair. And I think they're going to come down and volunteer for the foundation this year. We're reaching out to some donors from maybe a little wider reach than what we've done in the past. So we are really thinking on that larger scale. Good. Got to have big dreams, right? That's right. <laughs> what is your vision for the foundation of the future? One thing that's certain is that we're going to maintain our values. We're going to keep our core and we're going to stay who we are, which is supporting the Missouri State Fair, of course, but taking care of our members and understanding that that we are agriculture based and, and we do thrive on education and just really taking care of our Missouri State Fairgrounds. So we're going to keep that. But we're also I think we'll see some growth over the next three to five years. You know, as you know, the fairgrounds actually is in a unique position now to do some expansion. And there's going to be some building projects going on and some new things popping up out there. And so the foundation's going to need to grow along with the fairgrounds. So I think in three to five years, we will see a different foundation organization as well. I know we're certainly going to be working hard to help raise funds to fill in the gaps for the new building projects there on the fairgrounds. And we're always poised and ready to help support the fair when a new project arises. So we're just, I think we're going to be in a really in a state of growth for the next three to five years. It's exciting times ahead. But take a look back. Just mention a couple of maybe the key accomplishments that the foundation has made over the last few years. Is there a couple that just kind of stand out to you? Yeah, the foundation has done quite a little bit of work over in the swine barn. So some of the improvements that have been made there and we're actually in the process now, again, something that may not be noticed, but some of the work around the building, excavating and grading and getting ready to build on some restrooms to the swine barn. So that's going to be a really great improvement. So we've got 11 days of the fair. We have 345 other days of the fair. First, let's talk about what do you do those 11 days of the fair? Well, we certainly stay busy around the foundation. We have actually 
a number of fundraising projects that we do during the fair. So we have the dollar water sales, which I mentioned earlier. We will sell about 75,000 bottles of water probably during the fair. That's about the average. We are the official vendor for the Missouri State Fair souvenirs. So we have two locations where we sell souvenirs. We actually are the curators of the Missouri State Fair Museum. So we have volunteers who staff that museum during the fair and we're kind of busy getting it all dusted off and, and ready to be viewed. We have taken on this year, which is pretty exciting, but a little bit scary. We are now going to also be running the mobility scooters, wheelchairs and stroller booth. So we had the opportunity at the end of the fair last year the previous owners of that business wanted to retire and they had, it's kind of a neat story. They actually had such a great experience at the Missouri State Fair that they wanted to gift their business to the Missouri State Fair, which as a state organization, of course, they couldn't accept that, but they immediately got them in touch with the foundation and we decided what the heck, we'll, we'll give it a try. So that really nice couple from down south, they gifted their inventory and their business process to the foundation. So we will be out there renting mobility scooters this year. So we're just, you know, there's just a lot going on during the fair. And mostly, again, we're a fundraising organization. We, our goal is to raise the money that the fair needs to be the best. You know, we don't want to just be average. We want to be the absolute best. And that takes a little bit of help. For the fairgrounds within their budget. So we will be primarily focused during the fair on our fundraising efforts and just keeping all those balls in the air. And, and then, of course, we also have those programs I mentioned for youth. Our first-time exhibitors will be arriving on the fairgrounds and we'll be meeting with them and, and giving them their packets and cheering them on as they're showing their livestock. So we'll have, have a lot of activity around the office with that. Um, we also have, I haven't mentioned yet, but our No Limits Pig Show, which is a really big hit on the second Thursday during the fair. It's a fantastic program where kids with a disability can apply for the program, and then they are matched with an ambassador who is a youth that's showing their swine over in the swine barn. And it all comes together on that Thursday that the families come in that we take them to lunch and let them experience the fair a little bit. And then they go over to the swine barn and those kids who possibly never even been to the fair and certainly have never had the opportunity to show a pig, they get to work with their, their mentor and learn everything that goes into that process. And then they actually participate in a judged pig show in front of a very large audience and they receive prizes and it's just a really, really great experience. So, We'll be looking forward to that, too. So there's just, again, we're very diverse. There's a little bit of everything going on during the fair, and, and we're involved in just about all of it. So Fun times ahead. I can't wait. For sure. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned this idea about being the best. I've heard it from several people. And, of course, we have a governor who supports Fair Loves Agriculture And it's an exciting time. And I think the years ahead are going to be really fun to watch the fairgrounds and the fair develop. I really do. I think there's exciting times ahead. We've talked about a lot today. There's a lot to talk about. (laughs) We've just scratched the surface too, but yes, we have. We have. So if people want to know more, they want to get involved, give Carrie a call, go to the website to learn more, stop in at the fairgrounds and look around, you know, walk around and be amazed at the history of the buildings and the architecture involved. There's a lot to see. On a broader scale, you grew up, out in the country, you're working in agriculture. When I say the words rural America, what's that mean to you? You know, it really does mean, I think to me, a lifestyle. Like you just mentioned, it's the values and the opportunities that we have out here in rural America that are just a little bit different than what you might find in a big city or an urban area. So for me, I think it's just that lifestyle, the values, it's where we are. I mean, we truly are in the heart of rural America right here in Sedalia, Missouri. So I think for a lot of us, it's just literally who we are. Pretty good way of life, isn't it? It certainly is. I appreciate it now that I'm a little bit older. So, Well, sometimes it takes just getting away to be able to realize what you have. Right. When you travel and then you come back home, you just realize how safe and clean and 
pretty and nice it is to live where we live. Yes, we do. Well, I've really enjoyed visiting with you. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our OutDrive audience today? You know, I think just, again, please come get involved. We literally have something for everybody. If it's not through the foundation, then I guarantee you through the State Fair experience, we have something for everybody. And I hope that everybody who's listening is gearing up and getting ready to come to the fair. I hope they are. August 8th to the 18th, it's going to be here before we know it. Carrie, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun. Yes, it has. Folks, thanks for listening to OutDrive. I hope you've enjoyed our visit today with Kerry Wilson with the Missouri State Fair Foundation. Come back again next week and I'll take you down the roads of rural America where it's heaven on earth. Thanks for taking a ride with us on OutDrive. This episode is complete, so head on over to eCallus.com for more insight. You can apply to help drive your business growth. And be sure to sign up for our free monthly e-letter, OutThink, for even more helpful content about marketing to rural America. Have a great day and keep on driving.